Alright, somehow I managed to make my hair messy even though it's so short, what the heck. But it's okay, we're at home, who cares? Who cares about messy hair? But what I do care about is Yusubo, and I gotta do the practice test anyway, so why not show it to you guys in the process? Also, I have not done Yusubo in Eon, so this should be fun. Just a full disclaimer, I probably suck at bio now because I have not read Campbell in Eons, but hopefully Quiz Bowl has kept me a little bit up to date, hopefully. We'll see. Alright, so let us get started. Nothing interesting on this page, right? Okay, sounds good. Let's do it. Oh, bruh. Okay. Thales is prided as the first Greek philosopher, and he... <laughs> Why do they have that? Okay, anyways. Which is the following of the property of water? Water is least dense at 0 degrees, that's not true, it's least dense at 4 degrees, okay. Linear hydrogen bonds involving water are stronger than... No, alright. Water has a lower heat capacity, no, but that has a very high heat capacity. Um, hydroxide is the... Actually, it might. I don't know, actually, I'm pretty sure it doesn't, though. Hydroxide is the conjugate base of water, that is true, okay. Look up basically when you give off a hydrogen uh, proton, you basically get a hydroxide, so that is correct. Which of the following uh, statements are false regarding the secretion of hormones by the anterior pituitary? Okay, so beta endorphin. Uh, I don't know about that one. Okay, corticotropin. Well, okay, this one is pretty false. Okay, B is for sure false because basically it goes to the adrenal gland, but it supports secretion of corticoids. So I'm pretty sure B is right. Prolactin, that's correct. Growth hormone, liver. I don't know about liver, does that count? I mean, sure, I guess it probably does something to the liver and promotes growth, okay. Leptin. What? No, leptin for sure no. What? Okay, okay, that seems more legit. I don't know what beta endorphin has to do. I'm pretty sure it doesn't secrete endorphins. I've never heard that, so that seems false too. I think that's legit. Okay, let's do that. I'm not, I'm not sure about D, but... Uh, I'm not... But it for sure secretes growth hormone. I'm pretty sure it talks to the liver, but I don't know whether... It direct, I don't know, how do they promote growth by talking to the liver though? I don't know. Okay, you inserted the coding sequence for your favorite protein in the Hindle site, okay? You find that E. coli carrying this plasmin express, express the protein in the presence of IPTG, a lactose analog, okay? What DNA elements would you expect to find in the proximity of the... Okay, bruh, what does lac all have to do with it? Okay, ex enhancer sequence probably? Oh, oh, so I guess all of these are there, so okay, you need this, these two, these two, I don't know about enhancers, whether they're before or after. I'm pretty sure they should be before, right? Dude, oh, wait, some of them are missing some numbers. Okay, so promoter is probably there first. Which one's not there, though? I'm pretty sure poly A sequence is not in the plasmid itself. So I'm pretty sure 3 is not there. But wait, no, no. <laughs> I guess 3 is everywhere. Huh. Okay, so you need stop codon in the back. So that's obvious. Okay, 6 is in the front. Probably need a 6. So one of these 3. So 2 is missing in all of these. So yeah, I don't think, I think enhancers are mostly eukaryotic, so that makes sense. And repressor should be after the promoter, so 6-1, so it's one of these two. And then 3 should be after for sure, and 4 should be in the beginning, so it is probably E. Okay, we're going with E, epic. Wait, wait, what? Ribosomal binding site should be in the front. Really? Oh, I guess that's not even an option though, so I guess E must make the most sense. So that's good. Alrighty. Okay, so as DNA replication is occurring, the molecule below is inserted into the nascent DNA strand as it lengthens. Which statement below is true of the progress of replication immediately afterwards? Um, okay. I don't know what molecule this is. Okay, so this is, I mean, it's adenine or guanine. I forgot which one. Oh, wait, is it even either of those? Pretty sure it's adenine. I don't remember memorize these. Okay. Okay, there's for sure not an extra five prime group, so that's fine. Um, uh, there's no three prime. There is a three prime OH, right? Okay, that looks fine. DNA. Why wouldn't it? It would just proceed normally, right? I'm so confused. Okay, yeah, <laughs> it seems legit to me. Okay. Yeah, basically you have your phosphate group, you have your ribosugar, you have your OH group. I don't know what else it would possibly want in life, so I think that should be right. Okay. Uh, figure shown below is a transport model for inorganic ions and macromolecules. Uh. In a nuclear pore derived from, okay, in the absence, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> why, are, why are these so long? God dang it. Between open and close, okay. Okay, and then in a closed state, which label point would be open? Electrical conductance. Uh, what? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, you know, I'm not going to waste time on these because 50 minutes is actually pretty short. We'll come back to it later. Okay. <laughs> bro, why so many plasmids, bro? Okay, you have your freshly purified plasmid from overnight. Okay. Wait, it doesn't literally have the answers over here. Okay, it doesn't have the answers there, so that would make sense. Okay. I mean, it doesn't have the answers here, though. Kind of. Okay. You confirmed the quantity of plasmids by checking DNA and protein ratio. Okay. And they looked as pure as they should be. Okay. The form of DNA will be changed from... So what... what? 
Uh, I have no idea. Shouldn't it go from something to Nick because you're cutting it? Uh, I mean, probably super cool. It probably goes to Nick, right? That makes sense because you're cutting it. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, okay, that seems legit. Why not? Compound C is a single organic biomolecule with an important role in plant metabolism. Solutions of C and four separate test tubes yield the following results when combined with the reagents. Okay. So I'm pretty sure ninhydrin becomes purple when you have protein. Burette reagent, what? Burette reagent becomes blue. <laughs> uh, does it become blue with protein? Wait, what? Or, oh, I think this is with like amino acids or something. And then Pollen reagent is aldehyde with red or silver if you have aldehydes. And then Lugol solution is what? Sugar? I don't know which one it turns though. Dude, I don't remember this. Okay, maybe I think, I think it turns purple when you have that. So it's probably amino acid. Okay, so when it is hydrolyzed, it then forms a precipitate. So, okay, so it's probably an amino acid because burette is blue, but it's probably not a peptide because the ninhydrin is not purple. Okay, but it has to be an aldehyde somehow. Wait, actually, I forgot. I forgot which one it turns. Does blue count as a positive test or what? <laughs> Dang, I did not memorize this nonsense. Okay, maybe it's a polysaccharide because glucose is an aldehyde, so it would make sense that when it's com it's hydrolyzed and it goes with Tollens reagent, it becomes a silvery precipitate. And the reason why it wouldn't be sucrose is because sucrose is not just an aldehyde. It's you hydrolyze it, right? You know what? We're, we're going to go with polysaccharide. You know, why not? <laughs> Bruh. All right, so you have assigned a 15-base uh, degenerate primer. Okay, the M's can be either A or C. And you want to bind within, okay, so what are the expected number of binding sites? Okay, so basically the probability of it being this is like one. Okay, so how many M's are there? All right, now we could use our scratch paper finally. So basically you have one, uh, so you have all things except two M's, right? So that means you have a one fourth probability of everything matching. One fourth times one fourth times, or one fourth to the 15, or one fourth to the 13, and then one half because the one half chance of matching the m's squared times two times 10 to the nine. Let's just see what that is. Times 10 to the nine over four over four to the 13. Seven. Seems like seven is legit, so A, okay. Suppose you have the following amino acids buffered at a pH of seven. Uh, in which of the solutions was the major species that have no net charge? Okay, so it's probably one of the like non-basic or acidic ones. So, or what does greater than 14 mean? That's a PKA or something? I mean, isoleucine is the only non-polar one. Uh, this one is polar, but I don't see why I would have charge, right? Oh, 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 this is like isoelectric point. Okay, uh, C. So is it not just cysteine then? <laughs> like isoelectric point is when it has no net charge. So. Yeah, I think cysteine would make sense. All right, progression of cancer is often driven by... Actually, wait, histidine is closer, though, to 7. So I guess histidine is better. All right. Oh, select all that apply? Uh, <laughs> bruh, okay, yeah, I'm doing it A and C then. Okay. Which is following is not likely to contribute to tumorigenesis. Okay, so loss of function, this would for sure, right? Because P53 is a tumor suppressor gene. Okay, upper regulation of pro-apoptotic thing. That would not, because like if you're <laughs> upregulating stuff to kill yourself, you're not a very cancerous. Cancerous is if you never die and you're over replicating, so that's probably it. Telomerase gene, yeah. Okay, so if you have too much telomerase, you're gonna survive longer because basically either you're telling you to get cut down, that will lead your cells to die. Increased variation of growth factors will also cause cancer. And uh, I'm assuming this will cause mutations or something, so that should be fine. Okay. Botanist Grace is attempting to determine the identity of plants. She cuts through the leaves and she sees thick layer of concentric methyl. So it's probably, uh, what, what is it called? I mean, does, wouldn't that be probably like a C4 plant or something? Or, cause I'm assuming this is like bundle seed cells, right? But I don't know which one is a C4 plant, bruh. Okay. Um, crabgrass seems legit, let's do that. Alright. The Death Star, three reasons of power outage, very nice bio, Darth Guha being <laughs> Alright, I appreciate the problem writing skills, okay. Really doesn't want his kale to die, he uses a red lightsaber as an emergency light source. Um, he engineered his, uh, kale to overexpress beta carotene. <laughs> well, I guess he got played, right, because beta carotene is, like, <laughs> more reflective to red stuff, that's why it appears orange, okay. Bruh. Beta fear, it doesn't interfere, does not, yeah, yeah, this should be right. 
I mean, either this one or this one, but I'm pretty sure it's this one. Okay. Oh, I mean, yeah, I guess it's the same because all the light that's being absorbed is just the same as the wild type. So, I guess it just doesn't have an effect. Yeah, probably D then. Yeah, I wouldn't lower it, right? Because you're adding more, you're just adding more, so that should be fine. Okay, that seems good. Which of the following statements about plant growth and development is not correct? Most plant hormones are transmitted from one individual to another. Okay, that's not true. A nail hammered into the trunk of a tree, well, that is true. I mean, that's probably not true, but we'll come back to that. When the tip of the, uh, when the tip of the shoot is plucked off, the plant will become bushier. That is true because apical dominance, right? If you cut it off, then there's no more oxygen being secreting, so that, like, axillary buds will go out instead. So that is why it will become bushier, so that's true. Bends light, bends towards light because that is true, because if you do the darker side more, then it will slowly tilt till towards the lighter side, so that makes sense. The biomass is... Primarily, yeah, because the biomass is basically mostly um, sugars, so that makes sense. So it should be A. During the reproductive process in angiosperms, all the following transitions occur except microspores become pollen grains, that is correct. Ovulary, wait, no, what? Yeah, uh, yeah, that should be right. Um, ovulary becomes the fruit, that should be right. Integuments become seacoats, that is correct. Flower petals fall off. Tube and sperm nuclei. No, 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 no. Okay, okay. Yeah, so basically the sperm nuclei do not fuse with the tube. They fuse with, like, the, um, egg, right? Obviously. But, like, basically, what? Uh, what, what, what's again? Um, yeah, basically there's, like, two polar nuclei, I think they're called, and basically one of the sperms fuses with that and the other with the egg. So that should be fine. Okay. Uh, symptoms of mineral deficiency. Dang, I should go faster. Uh, depend on the nutrients function and mobility within the plant. Uh, which mineral, I, I don't know, <laughs> uh, bruh, I'm pretty sure, I, I've like, <laughs> mem this temporarily, I'm pretty sure it's either potassium or nitrogen, and potassium, I think, is the one that I remember, I forgot though, but I'm pretty sure it's potassium, we'll see. Anthocyanins produce the red color in leaves, trees produce them to protect the photosynthetic machinery in the fall as they start to shut down for the winter, okay? So... What is the x-axis, the date, and the y-axis is the green, yellow, and red. So, that is true. Yellow color increase. Significant changes were not de uh, detected until after the first frost. I mean, sure, yeah. Red, where, when's the first frost? Is that like the arrow? Oh, asterisk does, okay. Yeah, so the first frost, yeah, okay. So, that's not true because right there, that is true. Okay, so A, C, okay. Wait, what? <laughs> what? Uh, okay, well, I guess all of them have to be correct then, right? <laughs> Why is this? Isn't this before? Okay, whatever. It's fine. Uh, which of the following about apical meristems is false? They are found in roots, shoots, and axillary buds. That's not true. Apical meristems are just the top ones, right? Well, actually, maybe it is. Okay. Uh, might be. Yeah, this is just primary growth. That's the definition of it. I remember this as a thing, so that should be fine. I feel like C is wrong. I'm not entirely sure, but I'm pretty sure, like, in the root, like, things does break out from in between, but in the shoot, the nodes are actually decided, but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, in what ways can they increase their access and uptake of water? Produce a uh, rear, that's true. They can, that is true. And they could, yeah, I think, uh, A and B are true. I don't know what siphon fours are, so we're just gonna go with A and B. I'm pretty sure A is true. And Alice Huxley's he remembers Linda's quotes like A, B, C, vitamin D. The fats in the liver, the con, <laughs> bro. It was, okay. Okay, vitamin D. So, vitamin D is like, <laughs> wait, is it talking about vitamin D? Or, I don't know what's found in cod, but I'm assuming that vitamin D is what you get from sun. So, yeah, it should be scurvy. Wait, what? Rickets, rickets, yeah, okay. Vitamin D is for your bones. Wait, no, 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 what? Yeah, I'm not trolling, right? I think I'm not trolling. Okay, yeah, I think that's right. Vitamin C would be scurvy, but vitamin D should be rickets. Okay. Which of the following statements is true regarding uh, vitamins and minerals? Okay. Essential minerals must be consumed in the diet. Vitamins are organic substances. That's true. Important sort of... What? No. <laughs> Bruh. Okay. That is for sure not true. Since when did vitamins give us energy? Holoblastic. I'm pretty sure, like... Stuff that are related to humans are meroblastic cleavage, so obviously the one that's least related to us is probably gonna be it, so <laughs> D, okay. Oh, and they're not even an E, very cool. I should put E for the memes. Should I put E for the memes? That is a good question. I'm probably not gonna put it for the memes. Okay. Positive pressure breathing. Uh, I know frogs do, so that makes sense. 
Basically, they like put their like throat down and push the air into their mouth, which is kind of cool. But humans, we actually like lower our diaphragm and that pulls stuff in. Okay. Um, what is the problem? So I'm assuming it's okay. So ideally, you're supposed to make it hit on the back of your eye. Okay. So a concave lens. So you want to widen it a little bit. So if you do a convex lens, if you do a concave lens, it'll diffract, disperse it. So you want it to disperse. So A should be good. LASIK is for, um, wait, is LASIK for, uh, I forgot, I, I think, I feel, I felt like, okay, LASIK is for, I can't, I forgot if LASIK is for cataracts or for fixing your lens shape. I'm pretty sure it's for cataracts though. I don't remember though. I think, I think it should be A. I mean, sorry, B, B. Oh, select all that apply. Hey, I love these. Okay, yeah, I'm pretty sure LASIK is right though. Uh, yeah, okay, that sounds right. I think I have this though. It's probably not elderly people. Unless you consider me elderly, that would be very sad, but it's okay. All right. In your high school biology course, you were assigned to draw- <laughs> Dang. <laughs> Dude, okay, if I'm assigned to draw this in a biology class, I would have not. I think I made a video on this a really long time ago. Wait, <laughs> okay, I kind of did. Um, Dr. Lee, is there anything uh, wrong with the figure? You want me to literally read all of these? <laughs> what? Okay, afferent and efferent. Where do they label afferent and efferent? Afferent? Yeah, that's right. Um, sure. I mean, <laughs> okay. Is that actually a problem, though? Um. <laughs> Uh, I mean, sure, yeah, I mean, like, yeah, technically it should be thicker, but no one, okay, okay, whatever, this is so sad. Inner medulla, where do they put, where do they put the medulla stuff? Cortex, outer, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I think C makes sense, unless they are trolling me, which would be very sad. Okay, seems legit. Which of the following amniotic membranes can be resolved, or, oh, I hate this. I remember there was one with two things. Okay, I'm pretty sure B for sure, right? And then there might have been one other one, Allen toys, was that the other one? Or Amnion. There were like two. I felt, mm -hmm, I don't like this. Okay, I think it's Amnion or Corian. But I know Corian for sure is respiratory exchange, but I remember there was another one too. Huh. Okay, figure one above describe the change in membrane potential when there is a stimulus introduced. Okay. Uh, figure two describe the membrane potential of one of the stages for figure one. Uh, what? Ion one and two are also. Okay, this is gonna take forever. Um, so ion one. Okay, so basically right now the membrane potential is negative seventy, which is a lower than usual. Yeah, so like here stages from figure one. There's no stages here, right? I don't know. Okay. Oh, maybe there's a figure. What? That's so confusing. Okay. Yeah, bro, it's it's referring to this as figure two. What the heck? All right, I see how it is. Okay, so it's not below threshold in stages one and two. Ion two influxes into the cell. Stages four and five. I two influxes. I two. I'm pretty sure it effluxes, so that should not be right. Oh wait, wait. Yeah. Okay. It should should be that. Okay. It influxes. Wait, wait. No, no. It, it does influx. Okay, that's right. I'm pretty sure it's B, but let's see. Are inactivated that stage four. Stage four, both of them should be activated because it's going back to normal. Stage five. Um, not ion two. It should be ion one. Wait, so they're positive ions, so if it's influxing, then the membrane potential should go up. Yeah, it should be going up, so that's not right. Okay. Yeah, okay, that seems legit. Okay. Uh, Manuel has just finished running an intense 10-kilometer running race. His body has been... Uh, so it should probably be more acidic, right? Because your cells make more carbon dioxide, which forms carbonic acid, so that would decrease your pH. So B seems legit. Okay, uh, bo before birth in the, okay, that's true, all right. Disappear hours after birth. Yeah, okay, so basically it's not yet strong enough. So basically your mom circulates your blood through the placenta instead. Um, yeah, also, yeah, that's true. You also bypass pulmonary circulation. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's C, because it's not breathing, okay. Uh, you begin to, okay, uh, <laughs> oh, okay, so dilation of pupils is correct. Relaxation of bladder. Yeah, because basically you don't want to go pee. No, no, it, it tries to make you pee. Yeah, I'm pretty, yeah, okay, so when you get adrenaline, you want to pee badly, I think. Wait, actually, really? I mean, yeah, I, I watched this video where basically owls, like, poop when they're scared, so I'm pretty sure you try to go when, when you're scared, so that's not true. Um, that's true, and that's true. I'm pretty sure all of them are true. Okay, A. Won't be A, okay, so you don't, <laughs> increase his heart rate when he has high blood pressure, that's a great idea, no. Um, stimulate, okay, so, not acetylcholine, that would make it pump more again. Um, you want to dilate the blood vessels. 
So, yeah, I mean, norepinephrine or, yeah, sympathetic nervous system is for norepinephrine, so it should be C. Because, basically, these dilate your, wait, do they dilate? Yeah, I'm pretty sure your norepinephrine dilates stuff, but, I mean, obviously, like, one of these two should be correct, I'm pretty sure. Um, because none of the other one makes sense, so, yeah, it should be good. Alright, so it's harmful, but then it resembles a bad tasting one, so it is for sure going to be Molarian. Okay, what? No, no, no. Molarian and Molarian 2, a dangerous guy, um, mimic each other. So, and its productive power. Protective power is strengthened if the ratio of populations of species A to B decreases, right? Because if, if you have too much of the, like, not harmful ones, then the predators are more likely to think that it's okay, and then they'll try to eat the harmful one. But if you have mostly harmful, they'll eat the harmful one, and they won't trouble the other ones, so that should be good. Alright, so they're both childless, um, their fathers were brothers, their mothers are unrelated, they're engaged and they intend to have nine children. Holy, <laughs> okay, that's a lot. Um, person A is married and only expects to have one child. Oh, hooray, Hamilton's rule. So person B is in, okay, so he would die, 40% chance, okay, so cousins, what is the percent relatedness? So their fathers are half related, so they themselves are probably one-eighth related, so they're both one-half related to their father. So it's one-half, 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 so one-eighth related to each other. So basically, it's RB is less than C, so R is equal to one-eighth, and B is the potential, which is eight, is less than cost. Oh, so, oh, <laughs> okay. So the expected value of people you save is um, like uh, 0 0.4 times 8, right? Look, or 9, 9. And then you cost one child. So clearly this is like less than 1, so um, you should not. Yeah, so it's 0 0.125 and he should not, so B. Uh, during the breeding and egg leaving laying season, the female red cockaded uh, woodpeckers store bone fragments instead of seed in the bark of trees, okay? Uh, is that really a thing? Okay, I've never heard of that. That's cool. Um, <laughs> probably, right? That might make sense. Yeah, I'm assuming it's A. Probably. Why not? I don't know anything about this. Okay, so Amberella is like, oh, 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 so, huh, I hate this. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so, so, I'm pretty sure this is like rice or something? No. What? I forgot. I'm pretty sure it's some crop, so I'm pretty sure this is like later. Amberella is like a little older than this, I think, because it's a basal angiosperm. I'm pretty sure this is an angiosperm. Okay, netum is like a gymnosperm, so that's before those two. Sphagnum is like way before all of these because it's like a moth. Pteridum should be here because in between. So it should be 3, 2, uh, 4, or 3, 2, 4, 1, 5. 3, 2, 4, 1, 5, which is D. Okay. Watch this be like not a angiosperm. This is the only one I don't know. This is fern, this is moss, this is um like a gymnosperm, this is um this is a flowering plant, but I just don't know what this is, so hopefully that's right. Um at the end of a perfect week, Barney is suddenly confronted with the horrible news that he is a pot <laughs> okay. Um after Barney disappears to Bermuda, the mother orders a paternity test and okay. So if he's A B, his daughter could have not have an O type, right? And if he's RH minus, that means that I mean, can you have, it's a recessive thing, right? Like, if you have one copy, then you're RH plus, right? Do we know the mother? I mean, I'm assuming if he has RH minus, he, her daughter, his daughter for sure could have, well, well, I know it's O, though, because the daughter for sure could be A or B, or AB, so, um, should be E, okay. Although, I do not know why she cannot be RH, is it like, what? Not sure, okay. Consider the existence of this, okay, which controls, okay. Uh, the gene for the operon regulatory proton is it represented as pack r okay. Who's the promoter P? Bro. Why are they so long? <laughs> Holy god. <laughs> what the heck? What? Holy moly, dude. Okay, so, if you don't have r r bro. Okay. Yeah, you know, I don't, uh, I don't know. You should probably have the promoter or... Okay, so it should have promoter and O plus, I don't know what R is. Oh, it should have pack R too, though. Okay, so it has to have pack R, it does not have to have P, or it does have to have P, and it does have to have O. Okay, I think just D then, right? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, oh, I guess if you have one of each, it should be fine. Okay, <laughs> what? Uh, I mean, they all have one of each. Okay, well, let's <laughs> put all of them, why not? You sequence a group of 50 female fruit flies, all from the same population, and calculate the nucleotide diversity across the genome for your sample sequences. You find that the X chromosome has a lower nucleotide diversity than the autosomes, okay? 
Which of the following theories can explain this planning? So, uh, balancing collection decreases. Why would why would it decrease nucleotide though? I guess that is true, right? I mean, two makes sense for sure. So two and four, or one and two. Probably two and four sounds legit. I don't know what balancing selection is. It's like stabilizing selection, but that's different. I don't know. Okay, two and four seems legit. <laughs> one, two, and four, then option two. Uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's one of the two, so I'm gonna go two and four. Okay, it has too many times a mutation that differentiate the strains at this locus compared to five other genes in the genome that you are using to use as a control. Okay. Okay, that seems not legit, okay. Because at this locus, right, so, I mean, seems fine. Balancing selection, I doubt, increases diversity. Oh, <laughs> I mean, let's change this to A because it talks about balancing selection, why not? Um, how can you know what? <laughs> let's keep it what it was, I don't know. Um, control genes have experienced strong directional selection, reducing the number of, <laughs> what, that, that's not right. Yeah, it probably, probably doesn't matter, it's not as constrained, so 4, probably, what else? I mean, I basically put these two, and I'm pretty sure 3 is not right though, so how could that possible be possible though? Uh, so why don't we just go with 2 only, because I'm pretty sure 3 is not right. Okay, which of the following is true? So they're more closely related to, uh, that's not true, so it's more closely related here, so 2 is correct. Oh, what, mastodons? Uh, so that's not true. Um, uh, mammoths are, yeah, it's so only 3 is correct. Okay, C. Or wait, <laughs> B. Okay, we know how to we know how to do this. Okay, B. Okay, so this guy is a dude. Okay, potato bite to tell us. Um, you obtain more samples from a museum. Okay, and you build a. Okay, what do you mean in the following way? Is it? I don't see any. What? Okay, I don't have any data. <laughs> what? Okay, you know, let's skip this. Yeah, why not? Okay, elk populations A and B have okay. And you observe that each population, they've all, a single, okay, so they have one. Okay, so it's more likely to go extinct in population B because, like, a genetic drift has more chance of killing it, but if it's not selected for it, it shouldn't change, basically. So, probability of B should be greater than probability of A. Alright, um, when true breeding, brown female flies, wait, I mean, oh, but it's only, it's only one, it's only one, um, Okay, so there's only one mutation. So isn't it zero? Yeah, sh how could it disappear if it's in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium? It just shouldn't change. Yeah, okay, so I mean, <laughs> I guess it does zero if we assume it's Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. Okay. When true breeding, they have wild-type wings and uh, black vestigial wings, okay? They are probably linked, so none is really sex-linked, right? Yeah, because it doesn't talk about male or female, so probably C. In most species, males and females are born in approximately one-to-one -one ratio. From an evolutionary perspective, what is the most likely reason for this? Because of... That's not true. A one-to-one -one is most likely... Huh. There is no major selection... Huh. Yeah, this is true, because basically they determine minimal viable population based on that. Okay, Ranger Geraldo is conducting a population of Rhydon. What the heck is Rhydon? <laughs> okay, this is made up. Catch them all. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know what any of the other things are. I feel like aerial counting is possible, but mark and recapture seems better. But how do you capture? Uh, wait, they move in herds though. So, I don't know. I mean, probably that makes sense. If you want to see the herd. Okay. I don't know what the other two are, so maybe I'm missing something, but it seems fine. Wait, but they're large mammals. So you can just... Take a picture and then count, right? I feel like that would be easier. You know, it doesn't go with that because they're big. Okay. Uh, two varieties of the same species of voles are... Uh, I've never heard of them using... You know, I'll just go with mark and recapture. Okay. Um, two varieties of uh, species of voles, albino and redback, both are... Okay. Under control. Okay. Okay. So number of voles captured total 92. Okay, it makes sense. Compare the, it's probably compare the effects of uh, productive coloration. Okay, the same thing. Uh, it'll probably be more of the red brown cover moles would have survived. Yeah. Okay. So this, yeah, that would be true. Um, E. Okay. Um, adaptation allowing that is true, right? I mean, sure. Yeah. A. Okay. An investigator studying the diatom community present in a certain stream found 150 different species of diatom in mile 1, none of which comprise more than 5% of the total diet, okay? In mile 25, he found only 20 species, okay, with two species representing 80% of the total. 
Okay. I mean, this is possible. Uh, stream velocity probably changed. I, th I feel like that's a good example or a reasoning. I don't, I don't, I don't know what else the reasoning would be, so I think that's fine. Okay, radial and indeterminate. So, I'm pretty sure, like, okay, let's just see which ones are not that related to each other. Ah, oh, I don't remember this. Okay, so these two are really related. Oh, hmm, hmm, hmm. I forgot. Who, who goes radial? I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure, like, humans, like, deuterostomes do. So, <laughs> who are the deuterostomes? Polythroidia, I'm pretty sure, is, like, in echinodermata, so it should be B and C at least. Scythe of those, those are cube jellies, right, or something? So that's Nidaria, right? Something like that? I forgot. Okay, that seems, seems re re legit. What's trematode? Uh, what is that? Okay, I think cephalopods are deuterostomes. Deuterostomes, what pterostomes are they? I'm pretty sure, yeah, okay, they're not. So I'm pretty sure it's only these two. Maybe Scythe though, I don't remember though. I don't remember all the random classes and stuff. Okay. Trev Great is cooking up stir fry. She wants to. <laughs> hey, very nice. Bro. Ah, I don't, I don't remember this. Okay, so pseudocolomates. I'm pretty sure, like, we're all colomates. Like, birds are colomates. Um, pretty sure. I, I know a lot of birds have pseudocolomates. I don't know about any of the other. I don't remember this. Uh, huh. You know what? Let us guess that. That seems reasonable. Okay. Submit this boy. 33, okay, that's not horrible, okay. <laughs> Alright, that's not bad, not bad. Wait, could I see what the right answers are, though? Oh, it's there, okay. Okay, so I guess... What? Leptin is correct? Oh, oh it tells the right answer. Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, this is not what I selected, right? I thought I selected B. Well, I mean, I'm not right either way. Or which are false. Oh, oh, okay, so I was right. Okay, so this one was not false. Oh, okay, okay, I see, I see. So, this one actually does release androgens. Okay, okay. <laughs> I was like, wait, did I get way messed up? But okay, that makes sense, so that's right. Okay, that's right. Five. Yeah, I had no idea what this even meant. So it says B? Uh, what? Let's see. So electrical conductance, when it's open, it's open with electrically... Wait, it says... Okay, so plug. I mean, I guess. I mean, I guess that would make sense if you have more electrical conductance. Maybe I should have been a little smart about that. Okay, I guess that would make sense. Okay. Supercoil, it's a linear? Really? Okay, sure. I don't know. I think that might make sense. I guess if you cut it, then it becomes linear because, yeah. I guess it's not nicked because you completely cut it through. Okay. What was this one? Okay, I, yeah, I was trying to decide between those two. Let's see. Burette reagent positive test. Okay, I was right. So blue is negative. Uh, D- oh, no, I was not right. I thought- wait, what? Oh, this is for ninhydrin. What is ninhydrin positive test? Okay, so blue is negative. I forgot. Okay, ninhydrin negative or positive test. Okay, so I was right about this one. So purple is- wait, but blue is also. <laughs> okay, so it starts at yellow. Okay, I see. Wait, what does it even detect? I guess the amino group? Wait, but shouldn't it- what's- wait, if it's blue, then shouldn't it have a amino acid or something? Huh. Yeah, I don't know why that works. Why is it blue? Okay, I don't know. Um, yeah, sucrose would make sense too. Lugol solution, let's see. What does brown mean though? <laughs> is it like dark brown or what? Lugol's iodine. Positive, negative. Uh, I mean, I'm assuming. Let's see. Well, yeah, I guess brown is because you're not like black, I guess. So it would not be a polysaccharide. So it would be sucrose. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, that is correct. That is correct. Oh yeah, how do you do this? E, really? Okay, not sure about that one. Okay, very good. Epic, 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 epic. Uh, not so epic. <laughs> What's this one? Oh, which is false! What? I literally did- <laughs> I just misread it, god dang it, bruh. I literally- I literally saw that. God dang it. I literally told- it was like, wait, it's not right. And then I was like, oh, but all of them are- <laughs> bruh. I mean, I mean, technically, right? Technically, this is false, right? <laughs> Wait, that's so troll. I mean, technically did it fall. Okay, whatever. I'll, I'll take it. That one we knew though, okay? We knew it in the heart of our hearts. Okay, this one. Holoblastic cleavage. Huh? 21. Really? B, C, and D. I thought birds are more related to humans than echinoderms. Wait, what is, what is it even in this? What is that? Oh, oh, is it like a turtle or something? What? Okay, I don't know. Oh, 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 I get it now. Okay. I'm pretty sure, like, holoblastic means it cuts all the way through. So, because birds have yolk in their eggs, it doesn't cut through all the way through. Okay, okay, that would make sense. Okay. And then that's right. This one, what is this one? Okay, so, 
Oh, <laughs> okay. So convex lens, convex. Would, wouldn't that, wouldn't that um bend it in more? Okay, yeah, I'm not sure about that one. That's right. Oh, seriously, seriously, they said this should be drawn thicker. Okay, okay. Um, is this one just Corian? I'm gonna be triggered. Okay, it was Corian and Alan toy. I knew there was another one. I didn't know which one it was. Okay, that's right. Okay, very epic, very epic. What is that not right? What is what is thirty? Really? I thought a steel coline causes your oh parasympathetic. So oh oh oh, bro. I should have thought. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. It doesn't. Yeah, it, it uses a steel coline as like a neurotransmitter, but not to actually like stimulate muscle contraction. Okay, that makes sense. That all makes sense. <laughs> this is funny. Okay. Um. Do I want to want to learn how to do this? Okay. Let's see. Okay. Let's let's think about this carefully. Okay. So it controls metabolism of alcohol and basically you need to be able to metabolize alcohol or you're screwed okay so you need at least one functional okay all of these have one functional of each so that's not true also the oh PACR is a regulatory protein so if you bind to PACR then it causes transcription so you need your PACR to okay so you need your PACR in order to make it okay so the PACR could be on a separate chromosome but you need your O, oh, you need your O on the same chromosome as your PAC R, okay? And you also need your promoter on the same. So you need your O and P plus. Really? Wait, wait, what? Okay, yeah, so you don't need the regulatory gene on this one, right? You just need the promoter and the thing. As long as you have one thing with the thing. Yeah, so see, like, whatever has two of the pluses on one side, then you're good. Okay, that makes sense. Ah, uh, what was this one? Um, let's see. Okay, so if it's not A, it should be... B maybe, I guess? 38. Uh, E, all of them. Okay, I did not know that. So, well, okay, <laughs> that's weird. Okay. That's right, that's right. That is not right. Wait, what? Am I trolling? How could it go extinct if... Oh, I mean, okay, I guess they're equal and they're between 0 and 1 because you have to be able to pass it on. Yeah, because that one guy just has to keep mating and there's like a one half chance of it getting passed on. At each mating so it should be the same so c i'm assuming it's right what seriously why like they're both in hardy weinberg right i guess i guess it, i guess it's just trying to talk about genetic drift okay that makes sense hey i got this one without the data let's go easy <laughs> okay that's right really um what is the most likely reading i mean not this one probably i mean a right probably a then yeah okay <laughs> uh so is it actually aerial counter counting Okay, <laughs> you're not being it. That's so sad. Okay, right. Okay, so I'm assuming B then, or A, B or A, or C. Maybe C. Maybe C. C might be legit. I mean, I basically just uh, went through all of them, but yeah, I guess that makes sense. Hey, we did this one. We know our phylogeny. Epic. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Wait, I'm so stupid. <laughs> Which would not provide suitable larva? Birds would totally provide suitable larva. <laughs> all right, so probably B too, but I don't know what the other ones. Oh, which one would not? So, okay, so I guess it would just be B and A is what I would put, I guess. But that's not even right. She wants to. How, how does Ovid give you pseudocolumate larva? Huh? <laughs> what? I'm confused. Okay, well, <laughs> that I, I don't care about um, phylogeny enough to do that, so that should be good. What is Cyphozoa again? Am I right? That is cube jelly. Cyphozoa. Oh, they're just jellyfish. Okay, not just cube jelly. What are cube jellies called? Or box jelly too. Oh, cube is a <laughs> I got it mixed up. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. But that would. That's okay. What's trematoda again? Uh, flukes. Oh, okay. It's like tapeworms and stuff. Okay. Nice. All right. Well, that's a wrap. Thank you guys for watching. I hope it was entertaining. We we got through the thing and we got a 33. That's not horrible for one of these hard ones. This one was pretty hard. I'm not gonna lie. But sounds good. Okay. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. Let me know what you guys want me to do in the future down in the comments. But other than that, I'm done for today. So thank you guys for watching again and see you guys next time.